How much value do you put in like stuff like that? I mean, it depends because yeah. like there's objective journalism uh -huh. and then there's also like reviewing, mm -hmm. you know, which is cool and I feel like there's always a place for it. I read them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I, more than anything, I would like, if I can fuck with someone's taste mm -hmm. consistently, then their reviews mean anything to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pitchfork doesn't have like favorite record, OK Computer, mm -hmm. you know, least favorite record, fucking Link, Linkin Park. Yeah. And then I like this record this much, you know? Or they, you know, if it, if it was like, Bare Naked Ladies is my favorite record ever, but I, I hate this fucking POS record, it'd be like, Okay, that makes sense. I get you. Yeah. yeah you know, but, I don't know. It's, it's a game, man. You throw yourself in it. Some shit that I like to look at and like to read, but I just hope they don't review my shit because they never fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got I got the pitchfork this time. First day they came out, which is good. I'm happy that they felt this record a little bit. It seems like it they gave it like a seven four. So you just cool. basically taking all criticism no matter like I just have don't to... look at the shit. Like, oh okay. I don't like I look at reviews for my last record before I start the process of making a new record. Mm, okay. Okay. But I don't I don't see when people fucking hate my shit. <laughs> I don't know. I look at pitch, I look at pitchfork because I want to see what people are thinking out there. Right. But, I, but you know, like, it's hard to tell with those guys. It's easier with uh, like a Fantano review guys because you have like a barometer. You're yeah. dealing with the same reviewer. So you have right. a barometer of the shit they fuck with and the shit they don't. And they have like, and they have writers and all these yeah. different people. So you yeah. can't, yeah, you can't handle that what they're gonna like. Yeah. So I just stay away from things when it's about me. Them, like, for the <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So would that say you prefer like like what kind of like what we do over like written stuff or is it? Yeah, I mean easy. Yeah. I prefer uh -huh. having I mean written stuff, there's a consistent set of writers at mm -hmm. Pitchfork or at any of these places. Right. You know, but I'm not reading every review that they have and I'm not following certain writers, which yeah. I could be if that was what I was trying to care about. Right, right. But with you guys or with somebody, anybody that really does consistent reviews and has for a long time, you just have, you know, more clean idea of where you're actually yeah. fitting and it feels less industry and it feels less like yeah. this is cool this is cool and you see the person cool. yeah and you see, you the, see person. the person and you can see the the, the real response yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. Yeah. you can tell if they listen to it yeah you, know? mm -hmm. you get a lot of reviews i've had a couple of reviews of this record where my manager will do pull quotes and she'll pull out stuff where it's like well this is uh, largely accurate if you want to read it. <laughs> or this one, they say that you fill in gaps with the Doomtree rappers on this record. Mm. It's like, well, so clearly no, they didn't listen to it. They so clearly never single, heard this it's record. Not a single Doomtree rapper. Yeah, and that's like that's the thing. It's like you know, POS is back with fucking high octane, super high energy political <laughs> rant again. It's like once oh, again, okay. you listen to the record. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't the record at all. You know, like and that's you know, it's whatever. It's nice that. Basically, it's nice that my fans know that there's new music out if they haven't already figured that out because they're flipping through or they're clicking and they're like, oh yeah, you pay less, man. You know? Yeah. So, do you not read it for like you don't want to get you want it to get into like the creative process yeah, or that's, and that's to like how, pause in your okay? Exactly. That's how I've always been. I remember after audition came out, reading some YouTube comments, reading some reviews, reading some stuff, and just being like, All right, my fans like me. Mm -hmm. These people who don't. Fuck with me, really don't fuck with me. <laughs> this is not anything I want to think about. And then just kind of from there on, you know, I don't ask for numbers, I don't ask for ticket sales, I don't read reviews, I just get there. Whatever crowd's in the room is the, the, is the crowd I pay for, yeah. or I play for. And, you know, the people that know the new songs are the people that know the new songs. I'm not trying to like, if I was trying to be in the game like that, there's a lot of things I would have said yes to along the way. A lot mm. more things I would have said yes to along the way. We don't even live here. I had the, you know, biggest budget I ever had. Spending on this amazing producer. That album sounds really good. We sat in the studio with most stuff. We had like, oh, you know, we were we were sending out. You know, I gave him two beats. I was like, if you got time, really? Please. Yeah. And he ultimately didn't have time. But yeah. we sat in the studio for like six, eight hours talking about Watch the Throne and like kicking it, really wow, talking, like dope. building, which was way cooler to me than if I would've got him on the record. Yeah, yeah. Or like figuring out, okay, how much is it gonna cost to <laughs> try to get Pusha T on this track? Yeah. Or, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And I really spent a lot of time trying to be like, okay, this is that record, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And then when it came down to it, my most famous friend, Justin, Justin Vernon, who's on like on probably record. the catchiest song on the record, we didn't even make a video for that song or promote it as a single because mm -hmm. I just ran away from that entire 
vibe of going about life. It just yeah. seemed like I should just stick with my friends, stick with what seems mm -hmm. to like yeah, yeah, be absolutely. real and true, you know? I was gonna <laughs> ask, this record was actually a pretty big shocker for me. Yeah. It was not the direction I, yeah. I thought you were gonna go in. I thought you were gonna get even more aggressive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that I know you, yeah, but I was like, I, <laughs> for some reason in my mind, I was like, this next record is gonna be a lot more angry, a lot more abrasive. What made you go the route of making it a lot more? I know it's chill, dummy, but yeah. what you made the record a lot more chill, calm down, yeah. pull back. I named the record after the songs. You know, I yeah. didn't have a name or a concept for the record when I started. Uh -huh. You know, and I also didn't intend to make slower songs or prettier songs. Oh. Like I just made a pile of songs. This is the best of the bunch, and ultimately, like. There's not really tons of politics, you know, it comes out in who I am when I'm talking about me and my life, but like, yeah. it's not like overtly political, you know, um, and it's just because those are the songs that I needed to make, I guess, you yeah. know, like, I don't, if, if you've, you've been listening for a while, so you know that I don't make, you know, this is a song about tacos, and then yeah. I rap about tacos, and the chorus is about tacos, and then another verse about tacos, and it's my tacos <laughs> song, right? It's like, right. I always have like a loose theme for the song, and then I just kind of like, mind vomit, you know, I come at it like MF Doom, where it's like, I set up a line, or set up a thought, finish the thought, if I have a continuing thought, I will continue, otherwise I will go to the next thing, right, right. you know, and... So I don't write in that state, straight, like, linear way, so it very much was a whatever was written is what it was. So trying to attack harder beats than I made, trying to attack harder beats I collected from other people, just the songs were better when they were kind of just tackling my, like, demons and my shit for a little while. Yeah, you know, so maybe I got all that out for the next one, right. but I don't really know, because I don't really plan on how these things are going to go. You know, every time I think I know what I want a record to sound like, it sounds way different than what I intended. Mm. So I just kind of follow what's going to happen. A lot of people were expecting me to go back to guitars. That's what I thought, you right? Know? Yeah. And I did, but, but not in the not same in, way. Not, not, not in the <laughs> right. way. I think I, I set out to, and the first like batches of beats that I made were all heavy drone in the in the same vein as like sleep drone. Yeah. But like more just faster mm -hmm. and less groove, you know, less like yeah. bass line and more like just pounding. Yeah. And then it just those the verses that I was coming up with for that kind of stuff, the energy that I was making just wasn't it just mm -hmm. wasn't lining up. And then when I sat back and just like wrote something like Gravedigger or whatever, like just pop right out. So when I had the songs that I was gonna whittle the record down to from, it just turned out to be that. And the idea of, it was originally called Hot Dog, just because <laughs> I the, like hot dog, all caps, exclamation point, because, <laughs> you know, with, we don't even live here, it's such like a giant concept that was like right before Occupy and like mm -hmm. just kind of riding the zeitgeist of all, everybody's mad, everybody, you know, like, and audition and never better in these big kind of like grandiose titles for records after such a break it seemed like i just gotta like cut expectation for myself i've got to yeah. take weight off this thing let's call it hot dog let's like <laughs> whatever the songs are let's just make it like let's just take the pressure right off with the name mm -hmm. and then chill dummy made more sense after i picked the bash you know and it was running between me and laser beak and my manager Mary between Hot Dog and Chill Dummy, and then as the order came up, it was like, oh, this is definitely a Chill Dummy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering if people felt that he was going to put out an mm -hmm. album like that because of the climate, yeah, the, yeah. the climate that we're in in America with Trump being president yeah, and right. just, you know, really flipping the world upside down on his head right now. Honestly, I was finishing up the record as, you know, he was elected and as it was all like uh, really going down and there was time to like, maybe I can cram like three or four more songs on this thing, or maybe I'll write three or four more and they'll fit the mix or whatever. But it just felt forced. It felt like it did, it did I didn't even actually get to sitting and writing. To me, I still, and then uh, in my phone, and my notes, I've got a million lines, but I've got nothing that's put together as a verse because yeah. that just wasn't where I was coming from. Where I wanted to be more than anything was, okay, I still want to make sure that my views on the world are, expressed on this thing. Yeah. I still want to make sure that outwardly to the public people know where I stand on things. We're still gonna donate to the ACLU. We're still gonna like move, keep the fucking ball rolling, mm -hmm. trying to do like the positive things that I feel like we do. I still represent as 
you know, an, an anarchist in yeah. most oh. aspects of my life. Yeah, maybe you need that break. You that's know, what I'm, yeah. Yeah, that's you what I'm saying. That. I mm -hmm. needed to talk about if I was gonna make songs at all, based on what came out, is I needed to talk about what my last few years have been like personally. Mm -hmm. You know, and after I get my house in order, maybe I can sure. get my guns blazing again. Sure. You know? But like the point for this one was, let's get back on solid footing. Let's make sure that I am a dude, as a dude, am like as well constructed as I can be before I start like expressing my views on shit. Right now, and during the process of the record, my views don't matter because my house is in order. I had a kidney transplant and didn't think about the fact that I could die until like two years after the transplant was over because. Why bother? Why like put yourself yeah. through that? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I, I'll, I I have feelings about the state of America and the world, and I'm sure I'll get. To, but this record is a lot more about just where I've been. Because I was actually wondering that. Because like you had you had a Black Lives Matter line. You're like Black Lives Matter. Some of y'all don't give a shit. Some of y'all yeah. fuck with. Some of y'all are different. Yeah. And you said some of us. Some of y'all thought that racism was over because the president was black. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to get like, what were you trying to convey with that? I was just trying to say that that's a real thing that happened. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, how could there be racism? Right. right. We have a black <laughs> president. president. Black. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's like a real mm -hmm. feeling people still express. I'm a paranoid <laughs> dude in a lot of ways, and. You know, eight years ago, I was a lot more paranoid. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought for sure that if he won, there would be fires in the street, and right. we'd see the mm -hmm. fucking clan, and we'd see all these fucking people. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they couldn't do that. They had to contain it. They can do it with the way they voted or talked on the internet, mm -hmm. or Trump talking about fucking Kenya, like whatever it is. They could right. find their subtle ways. Mm -hmm. But Trump is the fucking tire fire. And the you know, what I'm saying yeah. Trump, Trump, yeah, the clan too, like. Trump coming in is everybody who had those right. intense racist feelings <laughs> being like, yes, yes. <laughs> you know? and I'm not saying yeah. everybody who voted for Trump is racist. Right. But I'm right, saying right, 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 right. all of the people who are racist voted for Trump. Yes. Voted for Trump and have like this like fucking dude that can go out and fucking yeah, <laughs> we're gonna march now. Mm -hmm. You know, like they didn't they didn't have that and they didn't really have the. Uh, maybe bravery, mm -hmm. balls, whatever it is, to do it maybe on the second inauguration, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they might have thought, well, since he's black and we get out there and protest, he's gonna change rules and lock us up. Mm -hmm. But that's what Trump's gonna, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, people are, people are fucked. Everybody's, everybody, <laughs> everybody is fucked, even the people who don't believe they're fucked, because right. when, when he gets his Muslim ban or travel restriction or whatever the fuck they want to yeah. call it, you know, when that shit goes through and the people who are assuming they're going to be rich later, so they vote with their future money that's never mm -hmm. coming, they're going to see their fuck too. Yeah. Maybe when it quiets down, yeah. you know, yeah. then you'll, you'll be like there and be a voice yeah. I mean, out there. If that's something you do, but... There's, I'm saying there's you know. amazing voices out there that absolutely will do it. Right. You know, when when the right words for that situation come up in my brain, they'll come out in a song. You know, like, right. I'm not trying to go down as some political rapper, because I don't know yeah. that that's what I've ever been. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like my politics come out because I'm putting myself, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is about me that I want to share, parts of my personality are heavily, heavily into politics, heavily thinking about the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I can't really avoid it, but yeah. I don't like go out there writing. This is a song. That was my that's my yeah. mortal technique voice. But <laughs> 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 this is a song about the prison. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to mention every every struggle that I identify with or that I can put into clean words. But I don't have the education to have a song about every little detail. Every right. Thing. I want people to research the things I do know and can share. Right. Right. And I want people to feel like they can come up to me after shows and put me on. You know, like, yeah. Tell me something. So moving away from the record. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, no. I have one more question about the record. Actually. Was it? I mean, I'm sure it was a conscious choice. But what was the reasoning for not having any Doom Tree members? There was, there was no conscious choice. Oh, really? No, no, no. There was no, way. there was no reasoning or anything. It was just, I made a bunch of songs. A bunch of the songs were solo songs that I was really fucking feeling. Uh huh. They weren't gonna have anybody else on them. And then I made a bunch of songs with my friend Monty because he's really easy to write with. Okay. You know what I'm saying I made a bunch of friends. Yeah, I just it wasn't conscious. It's just oh. when the pile of songs was picked, mm -hmm. these are the ones that fit this record the most. I had 
Blazer Beak hit me up like, okay, so the release date is this day. And I was like, oh, so you're trying to tell me I should finish this record. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my deadline to turn it in, but the release day is already not. Okay, wow. cool. Yeah. I'll just, because honestly, man, if, if nobody's pushing me, I won't do anything. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I won't. And it's not about lazy, it's about, I make all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. I make yeah. tons of music. I've been making fucking shoes, you know what I'm saying? I like shoes. I, 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 I just got into like the last year and a half. I've been trying to get stretching. Kanye. No, I'm not trying to get Kanye. Kanye. <laughs> Kanye is super inspiring as far as like hopping into fashion or whatever. Yeah. But like, I'm more mean. I don't think I'll ever make anything that goes into production. Mm -hmm. I think I'll hand make every pair of shoes I sell. You know what I'm saying? Dope. Like, I will spend the fucking mm -hmm. week making somebody a pair of shoes and it'll be the best shoes they ever had and they'll have them for their whole fucking life. Wow. Like, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not trying to team up with fucking Reebok or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm trying yeah, to like yeah. make some shit with my hands. That's so you can like. literally make the bottom soles, bottom material, like yeah. paint and if you all go, that? If you go in my kitchen right now, wow, you're gonna find a high post leather sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and a giant pile that's of leather. Dope, I ain't got room except for in my kitchen. So I'm sitting <laughs> in my kitchen, watching my TV in the living room, Stretching leather, wow. leather around glass, yeah. hammers now. Yeah, that's that's. What do you that's, say? That's, How do you I'm get into making shoes? I always wanted to do it, honestly, and yeah, I always wanted to do it. But it's the thing I figured I'll be like 50, and then I'll go to Italy for two weeks and yeah. train under a master, and then you know. But <laughs> what really happened <laughs> is yeah. I was yeah. bored, <laughs> laying on my couch, yeah. and uh. Like I was just thinking, and then I just sat up. <laughs> I did. I just sat up. I looked in the corner. I saw a pair of SB Dunk highs that I knew that I was never gonna oh, wear. I didn't wow. like the colorway. I got them for free. Yeah. Stared at them for a minute. Stared at a pair of Chuck Taylors. <laughs> Picked up the dunks, grabbed my Dremel, cut the sole off, used the Dremel, wow. got all the you know excess leather and glue uh -huh. out of the inside. Looked no. at the fucking Converse, cut out a pattern from eyeball sight. Got a leather jacket that I never wore didn't fit. Cut the pattern out of there. <laughs> fucking made some shoes. I've never <laughs> heard of someone doing but that. But since then, I showed him to like a real shoemaker, shoemaker, my my dude's then in uh, Minneapolis, uh, and he was like. These look really cool, you don't know shit. And I was like, you're right, what should I do? And then he just pointed me to all these books, pointed me to all these videos, That's so hit up more and more shoemakers, got my supplies right, got my tools right, read some books, and then now I'm just trying to master it, you know? That I'm is still gonna, thing I'm still yeah, gonna like, yeah, I'm still gonna go. The thing I've heard. Yeah, I've never heard someone yeah. do that. I'm still gonna go work under masters, I'm still gonna go yeah. get this shit right. But you know, right now I'm a rapper. Right. <laughs> That's my hobby. But when I'm like 50 or so, I'm gonna be the best shoemaker there ever was. Yeah, I'm gonna be the best shoemaker there ever was. Nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and like I mean I'm sure everybody's trying to do this, but I'm gonna try to make like a classic men's shoe. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna try to get rid of the leather sole, use all those techniques to come up with a really cool rubber sole. And have it not be like an old man heeled shoe, but yeah. something that people would fucking wear and really like. Okay. Yeah. You know, when when I'm in my early 20s and somebody's like, "What do you want to do with your life?" It's like I've always wanted to, you know, build guitars. I've always wanted to make shoes. I've always really loved making music. That's what's working, so that's yeah. what I want to do. But like, these are the things that I dream about. I right. want to have a big artist compound that people come to from all over the world to make their records, you know? Mm. Not have shit to do with, it's just a destination that they go to That's to right. do yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Make records, make shoes, work on their designs, fucking paint, whatever. Yeah. You know, that's like, in my dream world, I got a big compound in the desert where people come from all over. <laughs> you know, these are like my big dreams. That's definitely that's cool. It. I've, yeah. always, oh, that's cool that. I've always been into style more than fashion. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, like, I, you know, if you look at pictures of me from the 90s and early 2000s, I look like shit like everybody else, but at least I was doing it in maybe a cool way, or maybe I grew into Your own taking, all the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, taking yeah. all the pieces that I grew up with. Yeah. And, you know, growing up a punk hardcore kid, growing up into hip hop, and then just kind of putting it all together to try not to look like everybody else. Yeah. yeah. So this was actually my last question. Uh, you keep like taking parts of my yeah. life, but and I've never been able to ask anybody this question besides uh, Chesky. Cool. Being an old punk and hardcore kid, which yeah. that's where I came from too, yeah, yeah, I know. and then moving into hip hop, which is funny because we moved into hip hop off the same record, yeah. which is Funk Crusher Plus. Yeah. So <laughs> I 
always tell people that there, there are so many distinct parallels between the totally. way the punk and hardcore scene moved yeah. and the way that the hip hop scene has moved. Yeah. From like being political and very message driven to being more mainstream and kind and of less like message driven. Dumb. Yeah, do you yeah. ever think about that and what's what's your what's your take on that? I've always thought about that. I think before, you know, I'm yeah, I, I, I always used to try to convince my friends that liked hip hop but didn't like punk or like punk but didn't like hip hop. You know, this is like before there was a Pharrell, way before there was a Tyler. Mm -hmm. and it was just me in Minnesota and they're like, okay. Yeah. You know? And it was like, it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like the roots of rebellion in the suburbs where your parents can maybe afford a guitar for you, the roots of rebellion in the inner city mm -hmm. where you can't use, use right. some shitty home turntable to find the break. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they are totally parallel, and as soon as money comes in, everything's stupid. That's how it always works. It's hard to talk to people about it because everybody knows that you need money. But do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, it's a long conversation. It's a hard concept to grab on. Yeah. Is there yeah. anything you want to leave people with? Um. Yeah. Yeah. yeah listen to the newest record from Sims from Doomtree. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to my new record, Show Dummy. I'm POS from Doomtree. Go to Doomtree.net. The seven artists on Doomtree have. Uh, we're at Doomtree 75, that's 75 releases to pick from. Lots of it's real cheap, lots of it's free streaming. Just fucking check us out if you haven't heard of us. We're way doper than you think. <laughs> cool, cool.